All right, well, we all have to eat. So do not put the agriculture in the back burner because you'll be eating somebody else's food, right? Um, today we are going to show you composting, right? And composting is basically a method where we use to break down organic waste to speed up the process by which we break down, right? So naturally in the environment, organic waste it will decompose, right? If you can manage the factors that cause it to decompose, then you will speed it up. So it's influenced by all actions, and essentially that's what we do when we compost. There are two ways by which you could go about doing it. Behind you here, this is called hot composting. It relies on the activity of the microorganisms. So all your yard waste, your food scraps and stuff, you can make a pile with it and they will break it up. But what is interesting, it will heat up, right? So it will go 60, 65, and it will take a period of time to break up. But you can also do that with earthworms. It will be a different setup where you will not be piling it, you could have it into a system like this, and it is done in association with earthworms and microbes. So you could come closer, and I'll show you what exactly it takes to So, earthworms, right, they play a very important role in the environment and one of these roles is that of managing organic waste. They are decomposers. So if they are not there, I show you that green will have a problem. Two of us. If there is no one to deal with the organic waste, what would happen? We just stay there, pile up for years, right? And we run into some other problems, right? So earthworms help to manage the litter, the dropping, all of these things that fall on the surface. Also, they help to improve the soil condition. So when they break down these organic things, it now becomes a fertilizer for plants. When they interact with the soil and make burrows and so on, that will allow water and nutrients to get to the plant. How many of you are here doing science? Okay. Alright. I find you really strong and a little lost in terms of what I'm talking about. So we are familiar with the food chain and nutrient cycles, nitrogen cycle, carbon. Huh? Alright, so the earthworms the reason why we use them is because they deal with that organic waste and now we could put them into, the env into this environment to deal with our organic waste that we normally generate from our waste, right? So inside here you'll notice things like newspaper, see a little bit of coconut shell, food scraps, all of these things you could actually feed into your waste, right? So let us look inside here. And I need a few brave persons. Mm -hmm. I already hear a lady volunteer. Lejean. Right? <laughs> Worms are harmless. So if you have no fear. Huh? This is a... Sorry. Right. So. Have you ever seen any of these books in your soil? Right. So there are different types of worms in the soil. These are called epigeic worms. They live on the soil surface, right? They feed on a leaf litter, right? They will just sit down in the soil. They don't really come up on the soil surface. They spend all the time below there. And so they are called endogenic worms. And they also feed differently. So these will feed on mainly on organic material. So back in the soil. Yeah, you could put them back. No, we keep back in this one. Sorry? We keep back in here. Epi jig works. Right? Some of the information is right here on a poster. So if you, you want to remember it, you can take a photo of it. Right? So let us go here and I'll show you when it's finished what it looks like. Right, 
So, the process will be complete in about 10 to 12 weeks. So the twirls will eat about their body mass in a day, rotting it. Okay? So if you have a pound of worms, they will be able to go through at least a pound of weight within 24, a 24 to 48 hours to get. Right? But do we have the material as soon as they finish with it? No. And the reason why we would not do this is because they have a life cycle. So they will be laying eggs while they are eating through the material. But these eggs will be sometimes hatch. I'll show you them in a little bit. And when they hatch, you will have juveniles. So they will need a little time to grow. So by week eight, going on 10, you would stop the composting process and just leave it to finish breakdown. Most of these small worms would grow into larger worms. And eventually, you could harvest this, right? By putting some fresh food to the side of your composting system. So like how we have a barrel, we put some fresh food in a corner, the worms will move to it, and so they will leave this alone. So this is what we call the worm castings. And you notice that it is totally different than when it started. I mean, look at this. You seen any newspaper there? No food scraps, nothing. This is essentially what it comes to. So you could come and feel it. Shy to touch it. See how light and nice it feels? Right. So, this is a fertilizer. Right. So, I would like to tell you all as well that you could turn this into a business. This is an organic fertilizer. You know, these days everybody are talking about eating healthy, healthier foods. Do you think people buy worms? No? Alright, well worms are being sold today for about $300 a pound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so... How much a pound? $300. Right, so if you're thinking of agriculture, you're thinking of where you want to go with agriculture, well, you is a good place to start, but also you could do things that could, you could actually turn into a business. The composting you see on the side of you here, and this, you could turn it into something worthwhile. And the waste that normally comes from your house, your yard, the parks around you, all of that is free waste. So, I know most of us may be thinking, when you finish, you want to run for a job outside there. But this is something you could do for yourself. Right? Yes. Alright, so... Thank you for your time.